Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quentin here and welcome to tutorial number 19 and in this tutorial I want to talk to you guys about div and span tags and in the process we're going to talk about inline elements and block level elements and uh, take a look at the difference between both of them. So if you take a look at my text editor right now you can see that uh, the body is blank, there's no uh, content within my body. Uh, my index file right now is also blank, there's nothing here and if you take a look at that in the browser of course, there's nothing here as well. So uh, let's take a look at, um, first of all, the div tags. I'm gonna create or open up a new tag here, uh, which is a div tag, hit enter. And a div tag is a block level element. So let me just uh, type block element um, over here. <laughs> and uh, now, uh, if I put some text inside of this, uh, you'll notice that uh, if I jump back over to the browser and hit refresh, um, it doesn't actually display or change the display of this text. So maybe let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see this better, but there's no styling added to the text by this div. The div doesn't actually style any text inside it, but what it does do is allow or give us a block that we can use to then manipulate the text and put it in certain places or move it across our page. Um, so if I jump back over to my CSS and I start styling this div tag, uh, let me give it a uh, border of uh, one pixel solid and red. Okay, save this now, jump back over to the browser. Uh, you'll notice that this div uh, takes up the full width or almost the full width of our page. Uh, there is a little bit of uh, spacing over here and I think that's due to uh, the body having a little bit of padding. Uh, so this, uh, this body tag obviously has some padding. Uh, but one thing that is very characteristic of all block level elements is that if you ever give them a border, you'll notice that the border starts and ends, uh, you know, it goes all the way across the page, basically. So it doesn't just take up the space where the text is. Whereas if I were to add a span tag in here, so let's create a span, um, and well, if I had to enter at the right moment there, it would have auto-completed it for me. Uh, let's go, this is a span, right? Save this, come back over to the browser, hit refresh. You can see that the span tag also uh, doesn't change the display of the text in any way whatsoever. Uh, so the text is not altered or the, the there's no styling added to the text. But if I jump back over to my CSS file and I start styling the span tag, let's give it a border of one pixel solid uh, green, right? Now you can see the difference between the two because uh, a span tag is an inline element, whereas a, a div tag is a block level element. And you'll see that the span tag, the border only goes around the text, right? It's only, it only starts here and ends here. It doesn't stretch across the full width of the page. So that means uh, whenever you have multiple span tags, let's say I have two or three of these, right? Uh, span tags always fit along next to each other. They display in line. That's where the term in line comes from. Whereas a block level element like this div tag, if I ever had um, more of these, they, uh, they fit underneath each other, just like a paragraph does, right? So they'll always go one below the other. Even though there is actually space here, uh, div tags will not like fill up or yeah, fill up in line next to each other because they are block level elements. They always start on a new line, right? Uh, so that is the difference between a block level element or the main difference between a block level element and an inline element, right? But something else that we can do to these uh, elements is if I jump back over to my CSS, I can make my div display as an inline. So I, if I, jump back over to CSS and I just type display inline. I can make my div tag display as an inline element and therefore now because my div tag and my span tag both display inline, uh, they are in line next to each other. But I can also make my span tag display as a block. So let's go display block. 
Uh, and if I save this and jump back over the browser, now you can see my span tag uh, tries to fit the full width of the page, whereas the div tag does not. So you can change these things around. You can make a div display as an inline and an uh, inline display as a block, although there isn't really any need to if you just use the right element to start off with, All right? Um, but something else I want to show you guys is if we take away those uh, d block and inline uh, properties um, and I add another new property here, let's say div and we'll give it a width of uh, 400 pixels and a height of uh, 600 pixels, right? Block level elements can have widths and heights. So if I come back here and hit refresh, um, you can now see that my div tag goes across the page until a certain uh, point. Um, and this will probably be better to look at at the original size, uh, which is this size. So that's 400 pixels across and that is uh, 600 pixels down. Yeah. Uh, so uh, block level elements like this div tag can be given a width and a height. Although, um, well, I don't want to say although, although uh, span or inline elements cannot. So if I take these same two attributes, let's just copy that and paste those over there. All right. So if I take the same two attributes, width and height, and I display that on a span tag, uh, if I come back here and refresh and I scroll down and look at my span tag, uh, it it didn't take that width and that height. It should be the exact same size as this red block, but it's not because inline elements cannot be given a width and a height. They cannot be given custom widths and heights. Um, I can always change that by adding display block uh, as a property. And now my inline element, uh, as you can see, displays at the same size as the, the red block above it. Um, maybe if I just zoom out, you can see that, right? So uh, you always have to display an element as a block to be able to give it a custom width and height, right? But I'm gonna just remove those because uh, they're not necessary. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, just try and make use of inline elements where you would use an inline element and then make use of the div where you would wanna use a block element. That way you don't have to do too much styling. Uh, so let's take a look at some more examples of uh, block level elements and inline elements. So another block level element is our paragraph. Um, you'll notice that if you ever work around or, or play around with this, this also displays as a block. Another inline element is actually the A tag or the anchor tag. If you ever use this anywhere, you'll notice that it displays as an inline element, right? Um, then uh, in future, we'll be taking a look at some new tags called section. Uh, so section displays as a block. Uh, there's also, uh, oopsie, uh, article tags and uh, header tags. Uh, these all display as blocks, by the way. Uh, another one would be uh, footer, I believe. So the footer tag also displays as a block. And we'll be taking a look at all of these in future. And I'll explain where we would use them and why. Uh, inline elements, other than the span and a tag, I can't really think of many uh, off <laughs> of my head. But I think uh, images as well uh, display inline and uh, yeah, that is all I have for you in this video and I'll see you guys next time. I just wanna send a shout out to my sponsors at Dev Mountain. They run a coding bootcamp with courses on iOS development, UX design and web development and they can teach you everything you need to know to get a job within this field and they'll do it within 12 weeks which I think is a rather impressive timeline. So go ahead and check out their website. The link is in the video description. And if you do contact them, make sure to tell them that I sent you. Hey, thanks for staying until the end of the video. That really means a lot to me. Now, while you're still here, there are a few things that you can do to help. First of all, if you haven't already, subscribe and watch another one of my videos. 
And if you want to help me make more content more often, or if you feel that my content is just worth paying a little bit of money towards, you can check me out on Patreon. You can also check me out on social media. I will leave the links next to me. So go ahead and click on something and I'll see you guys next time.